that that place of accountability is very important and as blessing also said who you run to is important as well because if you go to oh. your bestie that is <laughs> both of you are looking for a relationship <laughs> you go to your bestie that both of you are, of you are the same <laughs> you are in the same category she will hype you and say hey you should go for what you want you should not let <laughs> Not let another person take your husband. But <laughs> when she went to <laughs> yeah, one thing to be accountable is another thing to be accountable to the right person. To the right person. Yeah. Yeah. He was very direct too, because he just saw how he was like something in his spirit or saying something. You guys, um, that is how we want okay. this man to be. Wow. The new more brother Timothy is <laughs> honestly. Okay. Welcome to another episode of Banters That Edify with Abish Dwelling, where we turn inspiring stories into beautiful conversations and discuss topics that don't just entertain, but also edify. So sit back, grab a popcorn or your favorite snack and enjoy the ride. It promises to be fun. Hello everyone, you're welcome to Banters That Edify with Abbas Dwelling called by Jegron. Today I have two fantastic guests with me, um, Blessing and Sumto, and we'll be having this discussion with me. But before we go, th- go down to the discussion, the title of our today's podcast is My Friend and I Likes the Same Guy. It is extracted from a blog post called Nandi Would You Marry Me? Um, that was posted earlier this year in Abba's Dwelling blog. So um, before we get into the discussion, I'll just give us a brief summary of what the story is about. So the story is about two friends called Margaret and Nandi, who liked a guy called Daniel. And Margaret had a dream about it. And uh, she she dreamed that the guy Daniel proposed to her. But later on, the guy Daniel proposed to her friend Nandi, which led to them breaking up their friendship. And yeah, that's basically the rundown of uh, the story. So right now, I'll give room for my guests. Sumto, can you please give us, uh, just tell us, what do you think about this whole story? What do you think or where do you think was the mistake coming from? Was it an error from Nandi or it was from her friend Margaret? So yeah, the floor is yours. Okay, um, so I think the blog post that we're discussing today is a very interesting one. And Uh um, it has so many talking points. But generally, I think um, from the start of the story, so Margaret came to visit Nandi and was invited to her church and then in the church service she saw this fine brother that was you know the ideal gentleman and yeah she she just went head over heels so it was love at first sight for her Mm -hmm, yeah I mean first of all love at first sight I have my reservations for love at first sight because you barely know the person they're pretty much strangers at this point and then you already like start okay picturing yourself together and all that so i feel like that's already a faulty start i mean it's arguable because some people think okay it's possible to just see someone and fall in love but yeah yeah i do believe that before you can claim to have fallen in love it's important to kind of know the person you're falling in love mm-hmm. with because the packaging can be you know all beautiful and all but what is inside can be something else so i feel i think that's the first point of discussion that you know came out at me like okay why were you just you just met the brother today even nandi nandi told her that you, you just met this guy already all these feelings for him so yeah that was the first issue that i i saw and then um she can she also had an idea that nandi might like the guy because of the way the conversation went so she probably 
was aware that there's a possibility that Nandi had something for this guy, but Nandi yeah, was not for the problem. Like she was more, yeah. she was more reserved with her feelings. So there was that. Okay, I'm not going to, you know, expose myself to you. <laughs> and yeah, they had such a thing. But going forward, mm-hmm. um, I think the the bane of the matter was her dream, the dream she had mm-hmm. that night when she prayed and asked God that, okay, if that was her husband, he should give her a sign. Um, yeah, personally, I'm not much of a dreamer myself. So once once we start talking about dreams, I, I usually don't have much to say. But from the little experience I have, it's not um, advisable to, you know, run with one dream as we would see later uh, in the story. Uh, uh, before um, you go down there, before you go down yeah, there, yeah, let's I, hear I, from... As, okay, I'll, I'll, <laughs> not, I'll not dig into that guess. part yet. All yes, right. yes, yes, yes. Well, he has carried that. all my points, all the points I wanted to say, he has carried it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Okay. But what do you think? Where was, where was, where did she get it wrong? See, my problem here, you guys, is first of all, why did that Daniel boy go and meet her? So all the time when Nandi used to go to church, he has never walked her to the um, outside of the church. It was when Margaret came. He now said, okay, this is the best time to actually take her and see them off. Of course, the babe saw a fine guy, you know, godly, good looking. Please. Come to meet her. I came to meet her. I was even asking her, Oh, what's your name? How you do Uh it? It's just, I don't know. For me, I feel like. I feel like he he's also to blame a little bit. No, I mean, but he's a newcomer, so he's kind of welcoming her to the church. I, I think that's which natural. Which kind of welcome is that? that welcome, <laughs> just shake shake her hand, and you you walk. But past. then she, she's a friend of a friend. Like he has yeah. he has sort of a relationship with Nandi. Relationship so now he saw that she came friend. to church yeah. with somebody new. So I guess that was just like you know getting to know this new friend of hers. I don't think there was any. I mean, Margaret might have made a mountain out of that interaction but i feel like it's a natural thing to do i mean well, the first so conversation because you shot you're a guy so you're looking at it from your own point of view <laughs> honestly because this honestly. has never happened with mark with nandi so it, it only happened when margaret was now with her like they were on their way back from church it has never happened before so do you see like she had to think of it uh, this guy it has never happened before so what is it is it what's going on what's going on on? here (laughs) what's going on and then eventually see see what happened she had she now had a dream she was she had already from the start of time like she has started envisioning or envisioning like her and the guy they have started walking maybe she has even (laughs) dreamt that (laughs) he was she was walking on the aisle with him and all of that but from the story we saw that she dreamt that he he proposed to her and funny enough like in the story he said nandi would you marry me that was what he said in the story and she now to say that so what do you have to say about that yes yes first of all before we even get to that point i think i have a problem with everybody in this story including (laughs) nandi herself because why didn't nandi babe tell her friend if they came to be best friends that oh she has oh i also Mm -hmm. like this guy because margaret was actually being very straightforward with her friend i said oh i think Mm -hmm. i like this guy which i i really respect to be completely honest yeah so why didn't nandi herself be like okay i don't know i might like him i'm not sure i don't know i'm still trying to you know process my feelings so okay so i think I um from the way i saw it it's more of a personality difference because from the beginning of the like it's clear from the story that these two people although they are friends mm-hmm. they, are, they approach things different because margaret was just you know straight to the point i like daniel and you yeah know, you you are you denying yours on or what because i can see that there is something but you're not coming forth but even um from when that they were going home nandi was kind of thinking and processing her thoughts and i think it said that it it seemed to me that she wasn't sure what she felt at that point i mean i think yeah she was not really sure within herself that okay you know was she um falling in love with this guy or because it was Margaret that brought that to the surface of her mind. I feel like she just related with that mm-hmm. as one of a friend. But because of the whole Margaret situation, she had to question herself. Like, why do I feel this way? Why am I reacting like this to Margaret's um, expression of her feelings for 
Daniel. So there's that part where I feel like um, Nandi was not yet sure what it was for her, but Margaret was like, I can see clearly that the Lord has spoken. This is the man of my dream. <laughs> and I'm going to go for what I want. So yeah, I feel like there's a personality um play in it. We're both yeah. are kind of different in that regard. And yeah, as you said, Margaret was very straight to the point, which is interesting too, because I mean, from just one conversation, you can already figure that this is yeah. Husband. I mean, yeah, there's there are such cases when it's clear, but she didn't have enough backing to to be mm-hmm. true true sure true what she felt yeah true so from the whole thing uh, i just feel like the two girls basically they like the same guy right so right, right now that's where a problem comes in and then now one was vocal and then the other was not too vocal about her liking this guy so mm. <laughs> the one that wasn't vocal she was now the supposed will of god for this guy and he proposed to her the real life proposal well, <laughs> the dream proposal was done with the vocal one. So you can see that there was there was this, this there was this chaos because it's one heard from God. And I feel uh, it's Margaret alignment, it? <laughs> Yes. And I feel like Margaret is a Josephine because <laughs> she she's a dreamer. <laughs> so she dreamt she Her dream was very vivid. She so saw very, all the very details. <laughs> Just she prayed no. that night before she slept <laughs> and she asked God. God is he the will or he is not the will of God for uh, of, he is not the will your will for me and mm-hmm. the next thing she received from her dream was uh, a proposal so would you would you now say that that proposal that was in her dream was not God was not from God <laughs> or what is the source of this her dream can we expand on that okay so okay. um interestingly i think this issue of dream in the previous podcast there was another dream situation mm-hmm. where um a brother called off his wedding three days to the three days to the wedding yeah. due to a dream let's let's not get into and, that today <laughs> and, and there was uh someone was saying that it was just a dream so yeah there's that part where dreams are kind of tricky and that's why on, on one end, I'm I'm glad that I don't get a lot of it because you can get confused <laughs> quite easily by dreams if you are not um, discerning enough or if you are not guided by the Holy Spirit. So I think yeah, she she she's so her dream. I, I mean, we would later find out that it was probably from her her thoughts and you know what she had conceived before going to bed because she spent a lot of time um, stalking this brother. Um, like you know his pictures on Instagram yeah. and just ideating the perfect future with him mm. so there's that part where you know she had um, planted seeds in her mind yes. and she was just hoping that God will confirm these wishes of hers so uh, yeah her dream and, and again interestingly the dream was also tricky in the sense that when he proposed in the dream he didn't call her name he was like yes, Na- yes. nandy will you marry me and then she goes like hey i'm not nandy i'm margaret <laughs> you know, yes. too forward. <laughs> but, yeah. is too forward. <laughs> but yes i'll marry you and it also and said that like when when clear also yeah. in the dream that it was not you like it was not your name that was yeah you, but she was so blinded you can't yeah. and 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 also when like he put the ring he said the story said that when he was about to put the ring she mm. woke up and, yeah. and i felt that was significant in mm. the sense that um she was she was seeing herself but someone else's name was called and he was yeah. going to put the ring in her finger and then she woke up i mean if you are looking at that with a clear head you would see the well i see mm-hmm. the nuances you would see the mm. the the tricky spots and you would want to dig for them into them you won't just but i think she already had her mind clouded by the yeah. thought of Daniel yeah. by her side. So it was like, okay, I saw myself, I saw Daniel, there was a ring, and that's all. We are getting married. <laughs> so so um yeah, dreams, as I said, can be tricky, and we will always need the Holy Spirit and the word of God and even other people. So yeah, we'll talk I think we'll get to that point later. Let me not get ahead yeah. of myself. But I just feel like there were some red flags, if for lack of a better word, in that mm. dream that should have given her yeah. an insight into the whole 
like the trickiness of the situation. Okay. Okay. Mm-hmm. So bless me, what do you have to say? I think I have a slightly different opinion. Oh, I think okay. that dream is actually from God because if you go back, so for our listeners, just to give them a little bit more context, if you go back and read um the um blog, you would see that before she slept, she had actually prayed. Oh. Say, God, show me if he's my husband or not. Okay. And the mm-hmm. girl went to bed, you know, say and she had a dream. But when it was time for him to, you know, propose, he got on his knees. He said somebody else's name, mm. and not her name. But I mean, she, being forward as she is, corrected him in the dream. I said, no, it's Margaret, not Nandi. And he was going to give her the ring. And as some to rightly said, when he was about to put the ring in her hand again, <laughs> she woke up. So this was actually, in my own opinion, God showing her that he's not the man for you and in fact he's going to be your friend that he's going to propose to um i think something i'm going to borrow from some too is um when you're praying to god you need to go with an open heart and not waiting or expecting a certain answer that you desire from him but honestly being open to receiving his own answer you know his own decision for your life because Again, I, I think I think God was actually showing her that he's not the man for you. But because she was already, you know... Um, he had clouded with so many... Yes, words. exactly. Mm-hmm. Emotions and wanting yeah. to be with this man that she had seen. She interpreted it somewhere, yeah. another way, mm-hmm. which will lead me to something else. But I think I'll just wait for, for things to drive us there. Oh, okay. Basically, um, to summarize what's like the points you guys have made you guys are making so many points but yeah to summarize is that uh, like blessing said the source of this dream was from god but god was trying to show her that what she was what was going to happen or what she was seeing was for her friend and not her right and then Mm -hmm. um basically also the discernment because she was not able to discern even after Mm -hmm. seeing those she was not able to discern and say oh god that that means you are not leading this man to me but you are leading my friend actually actually yeah. to, to this man so she was not able to discern and that was one thing that she missed out in that dream interpretation so basically she had the dream from god but then she would have gone back to god to go and ask him for the explanation to this dream mm-hmm. that he has given to her with regards to the man proposing well uh, with regards to the prayer she had because she actually prayed when before mm-hmm. she slept but then there's another thing that was mentioned in in the in the blog post, which was from Ecclesiastes 5 9, for a dream coming through the multitude of business or cares of a man's heart. So basically, it could also be that it was from the thoughts that she was having about this guy. That was what that was how her dream came out. Do you get it? Mm-hmm, so but yeah. even after that, she needed to still go back to God for him to interpret her dream. So yeah, um I think, the next I think yeah. I think it was a, it was probably a mixture of both because, right. as Blessing said, God was trying mm-hmm. to like show her that okay, this guy is for Nandi. I mean, yeah. he said Nandi, will you marry me in the dream? But she already had her pictures laid out in her heart, so she still saw yeah, she still saw those pictures. I mean, in the park, holding hands, and all of those pictorial mm-hmm. ideas that she had consumed conceived so i think it was a mixture of both like the the issues in her heart and then god also yeah. to tell her that okay no this is not your guy focus don't <laughs> but yeah it's just interesting <laughs> okay so yeah blessing do you have anything to say Oh, no, I think Sumto has said everything I want to say. Honestly, I think she was not focused. That's just it. She needs to be refocused. Like, her focus needed to be redirected again. And, yeah, I think... So, yeah, it, it, led to, it, led to her, it led to her being, like, uh, breaking up with her friend, right? Later on, we yeah. saw that in the story. So, she broke up with her friend because now... Uh, Daniel had proposed to Na- Nandi, and which is not her as she saw in her dream. So, okay, we're going to go on a short break right now and we'll be back with more exciting <laughs> discussion. If you're enjoying this conversation, kindly share this with your friends and family members. Follow us on 
appersdwelling.com for more edifying and interesting stories. And if you do decide to follow us on our social media, we are on Instagram, appers underscore dwelling and appers dwelling on Facebook. Thanks for listening and let's get back to the conversation now. So you welcome back to this um, second part of the discussion, and yeah, uh, where we stopped was uh, where Daniel proposed to the friend, which is now Andy, and her friend got angry, and she decided to break up the friendship. To, from she decided to break up their friendship. So, what do you guys think? Was she wrong by doing that? Or what is your opinion on her breaking her friendship with Nandi? Bless him. What's, what do you have to say? Hmm. That's a very good question. No. I if, think if you were um, the one, what would you have done? Uh, I, I don't know. Honestly, I, I don't know. But I think for me, it was good that she recognized that she needed to take space. And I also appreciate the fact that Nandi herself did not um, take it too personal because sometimes we need to be realistic with our feelings and we need to be honest with how we're feeling as well so that we can deal with it. Because if you lie or if you keep on trying to bury it, it will just compound and eventually to exclude in a very terrible way. So I think it was good that she took a step back to just you know recalibrate and get her feelings and emotions in check and we can see that when they got back together thankfully nandi was um kind and um willing and open to starting the friendship again um we may not always have those type of friends that you know so understanding so i think there is that need as well to be honest with that friend and be like oh i love you so much but i just need to take a little step for myself not because of you Mm. but me to be honest i i need to make sure that i can be that good friend for you and i'm not you know having any feeling so for me i think yeah. it was a good thing that she stepped back the way she went about it's not so much i think she should have spoken to her friend first um but yeah i think it was okay Mm-mm. and i think yeah like you've said i saw maturity in the in the decision she took because she, mm-hmm. she 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 knew that at that point she was the problem here or she needed to move back yeah. to go and hear from god for her own self because it wasn't her friend now that had had the problem. She had the problem. Mm-hmm. So she went back to go and recalibrate and think about everything that has happened and how she has missed it or where she has missed it. So something from your own point of view, what can you say? Well, <laughs> I think the whole thing escalated too quickly, in my opinion, because <laughs> everything transpired in the space of 24 hours. So. <laughs> I know. She meets- she meets this guy, she's falling in love, she has a dream. And that same day, I mean, the timing itself was very dramatic. That same day, she <laughs> wakes up, her friend her friend goes, meets this guy and then gets proposed. So I'm like, okay. And then you pack your things and you leave. I, well, um, as Blessing said, yeah, it was because her emotions were already very uh-huh. much invested. And I feel like she was also concerned that if she faced her friend in that yeah. state, it was not going to end well. So she decided it was best to just like, okay, disappear and figure things out, which also shows that she cared about the friendship. Mm, yeah. Uh, but yeah, maybe the approach was a bit also too, too dramatic because yeah, you should probably also speak to this person and understand, okay, what the, what's what just happened i mean how how is this going to you know what's what how, what do we make of all of this mm-hmm. but yeah um as for the living like moving out of the house and traveling away maybe a little bit too dramatic as i mentioned and yeah effects what would you have done if you were in her shoes <laughs> what i would have done i think i would have actually like spoken to my friend but i i guess for her maybe you guys are just saying i would have spoken to my friend i I feel like it's easy to say i would have spoken to my friend but if your emotions are are affected (laughs) in that way i i think the best thing was at that point to have spoken to her friend about it but since she wanted to like just give her space 
I, I mm-hmm. also looked at it in her own side. It was actually good. It was good that she gave her different space so that she can think of everything that has happened with her and maybe and also because she had valued her friendship with her so she didn't want to lose her friend so she's like no let me let me just let me just go and think of it yeah. <laughs> i can't break okay. i can't break up this friendship just because of this guy <laughs> that proposed to you so let me go and think of a better way to do this and which leads me to my next question because who she ran back to was um a figure I can call that person like a disciple or someone, a mentor to her. So she went back and she ran to the woman to go and tell her of everything that had happened. And it was very important like to note that like the woman gave her a lot of <laughs> a lot of vital uh, vi- vi- yes, vital um what do I call it? Advice. Information with regards mm-hmm. to marriage. So what do you guys think? Like how did Nan come in and how effective was her role in playing or playing out? How effective did her role play out mm. in um, Margaret's decision? Yeah. Mm. Um, I've, uh, let me just say, I used to believe, I suppose of those people that used to think that when it comes to relationship, you don't need yeah. anybody else. You just need to mm. use just you as the guy. You just need to use the <laughs> focus yeah. on each other. Until hmm, guys, or more, <laughs> I learned that it's not that's not how it's meant to be. So I think um it was good that she yeah. had somebody that she could rely on and run to yeah. in times like this. Because um when we are in these situations, and I think all of us in one way or the other we can relate that uh-huh. when you are in a situation that your emotions are really involved, it can mean different things, right? it's hard yeah. for you to think yeah. and be honest mm-hmm. and be um rational you know about the situation because she could have really gone a different way or i don't know she could have tried to do other things that would mm-hmm. have caused a lot of havoc so i think it was very good and important that she had somebody first of yeah. all that she could rely on and another thing is also who is the person that she was going to meet right like mm-hmm. it's one thing for you to have somebody another is another thing for you to have the right person you know a yeah. godly person that will give you a good honest godly wisdom and not just yeah. someone that <laughs> and not someone that has your best interest at heart you know so yeah yeah well, i think I someone know. mentioned or some someone said that because you are in the relationship you don't know oh you're not, <laughs> you you're not saying anything you know is really blind <laughs> that will tell you what is happening mm-hmm. so yeah. it's good that she actually did that like okay so something you want to say something yeah, I think Blessing mentioned something that I think is very, very, very important. And that's uh-huh. the issue of um, staying accountable even yeah. in, in a relationship. Because um, it's very tempting to just be like, oh, I love this guy. And, you know, it doesn't matter. I mean, it's just both of us. And we'll just yeah. like wing also it. We'll, just, we'll, 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 see, we'll see how it goes and all yeah. that. But the, the thing is, you in that, in that um, relationship, in that situation because your emotions are heavily invested mm-hmm. you are you you there's a tendency for you to become myopic yeah. in very many like ways you can't really see um I, I, i've had this discussion several times with different people and it always comes down to the fact that you know when you are in there there's only like you are you are blinded so to say Mm -hmm. by your emotions and you always need that um extra eyes extra pair of eyes Eyes. to help you see beyond where your emotions are letting you see because if you look at even the way she narrated the case to mrs naomi Mm -hmm. she kind of narrated it from a point of view that i mean if god had confirmed this meaning she was not seeing all those like yes those those nuances from the dream yes. she could um she was not even willing to accept that there was an issue mm-hmm. she just felt like okay why would god say yes yeah and in then the, dream, the situation and then, is, mm-hmm. is otherwise so she was not able to analyze you know the mm-hmm. situation mm-hmm. from mm-hmm. a um, from from an objective point of view because of her emotions were already in there okay. but when mrs naomi started like giving her the exhortation it became clear that okay, you're not seeing this thing as 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 it is, right? You are, you have a, a, a distorted view, and you know you ought to kind of step back, look at yeah. it again, 
and she started to understand that oh there's more to this thing than meets the eye you know i probably mm-hmm. have me- interpreted these signs and all that the so dreams. yeah mm-hmm. that 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 place of accountability is very important and as blessing also said who you run to is important as well because if you go to uh. your bestie that is <laughs> both of you are looking for a relationship <laughs> you go to your bestie that both of you are, of you are the same <laughs> You find the same category. She will hype you and say, "Hey, you should go for what you want. You should not let not let another person take your husband." But and when she went to <laughs> Father, yeah, to me. <laughs> prayer of agreement. Yeah. Back, hold your hands. <laughs> so, but she went to someone who kind of you know had um, both a spiritual oversight yeah. and also mm-hmm. experience, mm-hmm. and you know all. Of so she was able to get the right advice so it's one thing to be accountable it's another thing to be accountable to the right person to the right person yeah. true, true 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 she was accountable to the right person and that even led her to getting this this advice so she she from the from the whole thing miss mrs nan or yeah mrs nan was she she, she showed her something she did not see in her own view she she had only seen that god was yeah. god was showing her this man and then why would he show her and she's not the will of god for for yeah. his mind so like yeah. later on when with the whole explanation from mrs nan she saw that god did actually there was a red flag actually and then there was one important thing she mentioned which was a uh, conviction with regards to marriage so i want to ask you guys what do you think how many how many dreams do you need to see <laughs> how many visions do you need to see before you confirm that this person because She's a dreamer, so and she she prayed about it, and God showed wow, her. She felt that <laughs> she felt that he was the person. But like for someone who like dreams or someone who yeah dreams, how for how many times or for how like I don't know how to put the question. The, the conviction, the areas of when conviction. When do you know how, that, how that your dream is? <laughs> yeah, yeah. How, how many, many should you, be how before should you, you have? confirm that? Yeah, before you oh. confirm that, okay, this is God's will for you. Maybe like somewhere, you should wait for the fourth one. <laughs> <laughs> right? I'm joking. Oh my goodness. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> okay. But yeah, I mean, you, you people, do you dream? What do you, when do you Take your dream as from God and not from God, because I already say yeah, I, I, don't really want, I don't even want to dream, Steph. I don't even want to dream. Am I? <laughs> ah, no, no, no. I don't even want to dream. I, I don't know. I just, prefer, I think it would be better if you don't even dream about it and you get a confirmation from another so way. Because think, so, what way do you about think is dream. more it's reliable? The word, the word of God, definitely the word of God. Because but the word of God does not have your husband's true. name inside. <laughs> true. <Right>? That's true. <laughs> even with, ah, this even is hard. With dreams, but even with dreams, it has to go in line with the word of God, actually. Because mm-hmm. with, with her dream, someone has to look at it. Someone has to critically look at it like in a godly way. She has to think of, okay, this guy did not did not in, did, he did not actually propose to you actually proposed to nan but you were emotionally attached to him so that's why you couldn't interpret the dream well so she gave her a good interpretation that was according or based on the word of god and also in encouraging her that she doesn't have to of uh, with regards to marriage she yeah. needs arrays of of light. what Light, of yeah, light so that she can see and know that of confirmations oh, is, yeah mm-hmm. of confirmations yeah so that she can see and know that okay yes this is god leading me into this because we just want you can use marriage is a very critical decision that we can use mm-hmm. one oh one gosh. one confirmation mm-hmm. or one dream to confirm that yes this is god's will for me so it's like for me it's like okay okay now i guess i don't have to dream once <laughs> i have to all right look at the dream in god's word also learn from god's word like mm-hmm. the Lord, the Lord before i can confirm so yeah so um about this issue of a choice of a life partner right as you said i mean generally yeah. yes you should always confirm your dreams by the word of god but as i already mentioned the name of your husband I mean, maybe his name is, is in the Bible, like Peter and Paul. <laughs> but his name can also be a, a maker. <laughs> He's not in the Bible. <laughs> so how do you, like, now, I mean, we are just discussing, yeah? How do you mm-hmm. 
dissect i mean how do you confirm right by the word of god yes but like mm. how and also what other yeah. ways can you say okay this is the um the other backup confirmation that mm-hmm. you know, supports what god is saying because as we already said right there has yeah. to be a number of them you cannot just take one and run with it you mm-hmm. have to maybe hear from god in his work mm-hmm. here from somebody that has a spiritual authority over you just have that wide scope of confirmation yeah right? so but how do you think you know young people can go about because this is a very serious matter yeah people, very... life god thing. said god life god did not say <laughs> so, how do you know the one that god has said and the one that your mind is saying <laughs> Um, well i think that uh, this this does not just begin like that it has to be mm. from you having to be hearing from god before mm-hmm. even marriage because you can't take a decision with regards to marriage with just at that point so you have to be hearing yes. from god with the little things whenever he sends you do you obey him do you hear his voice do you hear mm-hmm. his voice for the little things so when when marriage now comes in you don't you will now not be confused because you have already known the voice of God. You know how he speaks to you. So when he's speaking to you, or if you're a person that he speaks to you through his word, you you know that, okay, when I read this this particular passage, there's an there's like a red, it's like just it, it highlight. You. Yeah, it's highlighted yes. for me. And this is God speaking to me. This is how God speaks to me. So like mm-hmm. with that, you can now say, okay, yeah, you can now begin to develop it he speaks to you little yes. by little and then when it comes to marriage it will even be more easier because he's not going to speak any other way aside mm-hmm. the one that he has always been speaking to you from yeah yeah and i there's even um there's this very popular pastor um mm-hmm. she was giving the story about how she also knew that it was god I and mean, it was the man she was going to marry was mm-hmm. who god wanted for her and it was also because she had been hearing from god over mm. a long period of time she knew how yeah. her father spoke to her and it was really from the word of god in fact she knew from john chapter 4 mm. um, the man by the will yeah she knew that that was that was yeah. Um, yeah. you know the man that was not going man. to first of mm-hmm. all the man that was not going to be her husband and then the man that was going to be mm-hmm. her husband she also knew yeah. so i think it's very important like being so i said that uh, you know the voice of your father you know yeah. when your father instructs you you know him you know what he's telling you uh-huh. another thing i would say i don't know if i'm correct or guys correct me if i'm wrong but i think that with marriage is a very um it's an all-round or it's it affects every aspect of your life spiritually uh-huh. you know, socially um financially you know even with your purpose right it affects every aspect of your life and like um mrs nan said in the story um the pilot has to see not just one light but yeah. you know, various of aspects life. of the light yeah. you know arrays of light so i'm also thinking that the person that you're going to marry has to in some way align with you um in every aspect of your life you know you know does this person do you even know your purpose do you even know what direction you're headed mm-hmm. towards before you can mm-hmm. even go with, with somebody else right so i don't know i think there are different aspects to confirmation spiritually mm-hmm. absolutely necessary you know also having your um people you're accountable to your spiritual yeah. leaders your parents yeah. also knowing and seeing who this person is and then allowing them to also vet and see that does this person you know does it match with your life do you, does it even match with who you are do you guys have chemistry i don't really like talking about this part, but do you guys even have chemistry are you friends are you mm. friends can uh, you sit down and just yeah. just hey it's important Abby too. Is it's very important. <laughs> good morning. Good morning. How are you? See you. No, no. That would be terrible because, you know, again, this marriage is not just for yourself. Your children, yeah. what kind of life do you want your children to have? What kind of family, what kind of home are you wanting to build? All these aspects are very important as well. So, yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Hmm. I, very I don't know if I answered the question, no, but... <laughs> yeah, you I should, did, have, I should did. have said something. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You did, you did. Um, so I think what, what I can draw from what she has said is it's emotionally not safe for you to <laughs> to fall in love before, Just fall in love <laughs> before hearing from God, right? So it is, ve- it is yeah. very, very safe for you to not please hear from God first before you fall yes. in love because it's better for you when you, you've heard from God, you know that this person is actually the real of this person is going 
in line with the purpose. First thing, we even have to also outline that the person has to be born again. The person has to be mm-hmm. on the same plane mm-hmm. with you. As a God, you want to get into a godly relationship, that person mm-hmm. has to be a believer. That person has to start working with God, has to have a working relationship with God. He has to be someone that is is hearing from God. He has to be someone that knows God, that loves God. Then you can now say, okay, what next? Is he now in line with God's purpose? Or is, is the, God, the purpose that God has given me concerning my life, can we say they are aligning? Can we say we can work together? And the person has to also be your friend, like Blessing has said, because mm-hmm. you cannot <laughs> you cannot go and be marrying somebody because feelings feelings actually expires because mm-hmm. <laughs> we hear it, we hear them saying it, but yeah, it's, you don't you you don't base your marriage on feelings, just one time feeling or the feeling of love that you have. The feeling of love would expire, but what what keeps it afterwards? What keeps it afterwards? So yeah. Uh, I don't know. Do we have any other thing? Something do you have to say? Well, I think I think it's 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 important to mention that you know all this foundation laying part, like you know mm-hmm. knowing your purpose, yeah, um, figuring out, um, getting the light in different ways from God, mm. is ne- is important to note that it should be done from a a clear headed point mm. that you should not. First of all, start falling in love and then <laughs> before you yeah. fall out, <laughs> you can't fall out. <laughs> so you fall, fall in out. and you fall out. Is I, I think it's 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 more towards the ladies because uh. it's that point where you know you just like the guy and he's tickling your fancy. And ah, does it happen to men too? No, it does. But I feel like we can be more objective. Mm. Like you you admire the person and then you kind of start to dig into the important things right mm-hmm. but for the ladies you are more prone to getting your emotions attached because yes. i've okay. i've had this conversation with both guys and ladies and i i, I picked it, it some differences so it's important to do it from a clear-headed um position where you can mm-hmm. see where you can you can still think logically and hear god clearly without filters without any interference from your emotions so yeah um just to add, um add to that point of don't fall in love before you start yeah. going out the will of god figure out the will of god first before you now fall in love yeah <laughs> why are we even falling in love can we not stand it let me stand it <laughs> Let us stand in love. Oh my God. But okay, lastly, I have this question. So to someone who like, he's like a lady who is like yeah. saying that my biological clock is ticking. I don't have time again. So mm. what, how do you now, or what, uh, what advice can we give to such a person who is like, I don't know, my time is, time is going and no one is coming to me. What do I do? I'm I'm not being approached by guys. I'm not being approached. So what do you think as a godly lady? What do you think or what kind of advice can you give? Listen, I think that should go to you. Oh my goodness. I was hoping that question would not come to me. Because it put me, I'm looking for the answer. So let me let me pass on the question to you, Sobjo. And let me think about the bit more. Yeah. Sobjo, okay. Well, for Sobjo, he's a guy. So but I, I I feel like yeah, there's always that part where, I mean, we are. In, I feel we are in that stage where people are now mm. counting their, they are looking at biological clock and all mm-hmm. that. But I think generally worrying about things or issues like this, first of all, it doesn't help the matter. Yeah. Um, it only gives you more headache than you should have, and mm-hmm. it also puts you in a risky position where you are kind of vulnerable and mm-hmm. you might be quick to just jump at any, guy any that prospective comes, yeah. guy that mm-hmm. comes your way. So mm-hmm. um, for you not to fall prey to that trap, I think it's important that you just rest. Try the rest. Mm. Um, <laughs> rest in God's, mm. in, in, yeah. in, in the confidence that God has a perfect plan for you yeah. and that in due time it will all manifest. I, I mean, even though it seems like it's taking time, the yeah. the the natural clock is not super. Like, it is not superior to God's. Divine mm, God's yeah, God's divine so clock. It's important so. to still 
hold on to like that confidence i think it's just a a, a place of rest in your mm. spirit, in your heart mm. you just know that god god has got this figured out and i don't need to stress my mind over it that mm, way yeah. you're a better position to see clearly and know when the right man comes so jump mm-hmm. from relationship thank to relationship. you i think i needed to hear sure. that as well <laughs> and also, but, yeah. yeah i think i would also add to that like build yourself right during your single mm-hmm. time you need, it's a time for building it's a time for you to hear god well it's a time for you to hacking serve serve in the house of god also it's a time for you to serve so people people say this thing but they don't they don't hear we don't hear as you serve in the house of god because the man would he would mm. definitely he should meet you in Oh. in your father's house serving mm-hmm. in your father's mm-hmm. house because that, that <laughs> he will value you more he will value you more when 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 he knows that he has to seek your father before he finds you do you get mm-hmm. so like you have to now build your relationship with god and at that time i i think it is a time for you also to learn more about marriage learn more about yeah. like, even your career you can focus more on okay where is god leading me what is what is his purpose for me so that when the guy comes it won't be a okay let me start afresh like thinking of what's god's purpose for me or am i meant to when you have already gotten it from from that single point when the guy comes it's like yeah a whole like express mm. way you get like a, can, I, a good can i quickly interject something there that uh-huh. just I'm just thinking about I think for me the first thing I would say to myself and to anybody else because this mm. is also for me you know for every other lady of course is um first of all know that it's okay to want to be married it's mm. it's okay to want to be with somebody in fact God has put that desire in your heart so it's okay to own that and be like you know what Lord I I'm I think I want to you know be married I want to have my own companion my own person you know I think that's very okay for you to agree and accept to it and I think secondly it's also important that like things so has said but I'll put it in a different way be open and being open means I'm going to put this so you have to be strategic too you know you have to strategically yeah, really. close your place yourself in the right positions you know not in a in a manipulative way right but you know mm. be serving be in a place uh-huh. where people can actually see you and appreciate uh-huh. you and your qualities if you're hiding in your room nobody's going to come and look for you there uh-huh. right uh-huh. except maybe you, there's one divine maybe you, i don't know but <laughs> but put yourself like in places where people can actually appreciate your qualities you know that you're hard working you're ready to serve your father i think that's also very important as well yeah. and then thirdly i think for me i would say also is are you the kind of person that you want to end up with like the man that you're looking for or the woman you're looking for are they looking for you Wow. Mm. I said that honestly and if you think you're not yet there then work on yourself every aspect of your life there's always room to grow and improve mm. so yeah. when the time is right it will happen and it will be amazing mm. Yeah. Mm. truthfully wow. truthfully wow <laughs> Okay, so let me just quickly add to that service yeah. thing because if you look at Ruth's story, mm. um, how she met Boaz. I mean, yeah. every lady, every lady now wants to meet their Boaz. You know, Boaz was <laughs> wealthy. Boaz was it was just the you know the, the ideal man of your dreams. But yeah, uh, she was serving pretty much, yes. and it was in that place of service that he noticed her and he was like, "Oh, who is that lady?" And then they gave him the history and all that. So. Um yeah you you will probably not be in your room I, maybe god can send somebody to come and find you <laughs> <laughs> but also the service and working on on you know your go your vision your purpose mm. it also helps you in terms of knowing if you are compatible with this brother or not mm-hmm. because you have sure. and it's it's like you are going on a journey in marriage and if you are traveling to a certain destination Yeah. And someone else is traveling to a different destination, you know straight off the bat mm-hmm. that yeah. you're not compatible. But if you are just mm-hmm. static without a, an orientation, without a direction, and somebody that is going on his own journey says, please join me, let's be going. You don't even know where you are going. Yeah. <laughs> you're just, you just there. So you will not have anything to measure by like, okay, you are going east. I mean, am I supposed to go east? I'm mm-hmm. supposed to go west. But if you have a direction already, you can say, okay, you're going east and God has told me that I'm supposed to go west. So first of all, there's okay. also there, there's already a misalignment. Mm-hmm. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, so yeah. that also helps you to know when you know it's yeah. right or, or wrong. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Truthfully, truthfully, thank you guys so much. This was really a powerful one. Mm-hmm. And just to give a summary to everything we have said, firstly, we have learned that we should allow God to be the interpret- interpreter, interpreter mm-hmm. of our dreams, right? Um, let us dream. If you are a dreamer, allow the Lord to interpret your dream. Don't go into go, going to look for the interpretation of dream through dream book, books or through <laughs> through the internet. Allow God to interpret your dream, and then have disciples, have people who would you are accountable to, who you could go and relate your feelings to. Right? Have people that you can talk to that can give you wise counsel, godly counsel with regards to relationship. And I think one other thing we mentioned is you cannot base your marriage decision on one confirmation or one one uh, dream that you had. So you need to have a, a lot of arrays of confirmation before you can say, yes, this is God's will for you. So be be mindful of that. Don't say, because I had just this dream. I saw this guy. That's just it. He's just the will of God for me. Yes, God can release. God can reveal to you one time that this person is. But you need to also speak to counselors. You need to see from another person. Someone has to, someone matured, has to also like take you through the whole process. So it's good to be accountable. Accountable, have accountability partners, godly accountability partners and also um, adults who can help you with decisions like this in marriage then i don't know if there's any other we didn't, we didn't talk about brother tim because we've, we've we've not we didn't talk about that's true when, at the end of the <laughs> yeah because i mean margaret also f- eventually found her own. it's going to be on another episode, another episode. <laughs> yeah watch True, out for this yeah. space watch out for part two yeah, yeah okay. but at the end of it at the end of the whole episode um, the whole blog post it was mentioned there that uh, Margaret also had someone who came to her, who came to settle, got, got sent someone to settle her case. Bro- bro- brother Tim was basically. very direct too, because he just saw her, he was like something in his spirit or saying something. You guys, um, that is how we want okay. this man to be. Wow. Do you know Brother Timothy? <laughs> Honestly. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But it is well, God will keep directing us <laughs> and God will keep helping us in, with regards to marriage, um, marriage, what? Issues. <laughs> issues, yeah. <laughs> with regards to marriage issues. And let's keep hearing from God, guys. If there's anything yeah. I want, I learned from here is hear from God, hear from God, hear from mm. God, please. Before you even get into it, don't be waiting that the guy should come and ask you out first. Start hearing from God. Don't fall Start in hearing love from God concerning your you marriage. Fall out. <laughs> before time comes. Start hearing from God concerning your marriage. Start preparing. Start serving. Serving mm-hmm. the house of God. And God will settle us all in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So Amen. The, thank you, my guests, for being here with me. Thank you for your discussion. Thank you for your points. I was so blessed to have you guys here. So bye for now. Bye. Bye. Bye, guys. See you guys. Watch out for part two. (laughs) So, we've come to the end of our conversation today. Thank you for listening in. Let us know what you think by reaching out to us through our email at abbasdwellingplace at gmail.com. Would love to hear from you. See you again next week. Bye. Thank you.